Okay, you guys, this is my dining room. This is where I live. And I wanted to show you guys the process that we went through to get here because I think so often people think that a designer lives in this perfect house that's perfectly designed and very often we are the cobblers with no shoes. So this is what our dining room looks like now. And this is what it looked like before. There was this huge wall here that went across the whole space and it was really cramped and really dark. And when you're in row houses like I live in Virginia, sometimes it really does feel like you're living in the barrel of a shotgun. And we wanted to blow that wall out and make it much brighter. But when we did that, we ran into a lot of structural issues that ended up costing a ton of money and it just blew the budget right out the window. And I had to start thinking really creatively about how I could make this work. The first thing that I thought that I had to have were these beautiful custom bookcases that I designed with beautiful millwork and they were as expensive as a car. So that just went right out the window. And the creative solution that I came up with was this way to cantilever books on the wall. And I'm linking you in the buying guide to exactly where to buy this so that you can do it. It's so inexpensive and everyone now loves it. And it ended up being one of those happy accidents that happens in design sometimes. But I love having books in a dining room because it shows what you love to read. It's a little glimpse into who you are and it kind of prompts conversation around the table. And let's be honest, I don't, I don't read um, very many books. I like to watch Bravo, but my husband is a genius. And so most of these books are his, but he's happy and it worked within the budget. And the next thing that we had to do was the light fixture that was here before was this brass-tastic heinousness. It was like a reproduction of colonial gnarliness and I killed it. But the chandelier that I really wanted, again, was the cost of a car because champagne taste, caviar, dreams. What am I saying? Champagne taste on a beer budget. <laughs> it's what I mean. But killed the brass-tastic chandelier. And this is what we found. And this is a great tip. I found this chandelier just neglected and ignored in the corner of a flea market. No one thought it would amount to anything. It was broken, but I took it, had it cleaned and rewired. And I think all in this sucker was like 400 bucks. So that's a little tip from your good friend, Ann. The next thing that I wanted to do was mix these inherited pieces that had been passed down in my family with newer pieces because it was starting to feel a little granny. And I love this table. It was given to me by my mother, but I didn't like it with wooden chairs. I love mixing black chairs with a wooden table. I just think it kind of mixes things up a bit. And I love flat black chairs. And my husband and I, these were the very first things we ever bought when we were married. And I just think it looks so good with the wood. And it also works well with these other inherited pieces. The rug. The rug that I wanted was a full year of college. So we can't be that mean to our children and tap the college fund. And so I had to come up with another creative solution, which was this amazing rug. It's so well priced. It's all wool. It's reversible. But the main reason that I love doing a fairly economical rug like this is I have little girls. We entertain a lot. And if I have something too expensive on the floor, then I become this crazy woman and I spaz out if anyone ever drops spaghetti. This one has had cat barf on it, spaghetti on it. Clean that up with a little resolve and it's done. And I know that if it ever does get truly ruined, it's no big deal because it wasn't that expensive. Hello, Josh Manis. This is the most amazing artist. I found this at First Dibs in New York when I was shopping for another client project. He makes the coolest collages. You're going to fall in love with him. And I gave it to my husband last year for a Christmas present. But the reason I love it is it's very unexpected in a dining room. It totally is a conversation starter and it's just completely bad. And then this last little thing that I wanted to show you guys is mixing things that you don't always think would go together. My husband found this on the side of the road. It's just a little hunk of wood that had four random holes drilled in it. And I was like, great, let's use it as a vase. And I put old spice jars in it that fit perfectly. And now we've used it forever. And I love pairing it with these very precious, very important terrines that were passed down in my family. I think it's such a cool dialogue with itself. And then these vintage eggs were my grandmothers and my grandfathers. They used to collect eggs in every tr country that they would travel to. And so my husband and I have started the tradition ourselves, but it's a very unique centerpiece that no one else is going to have. It's kind of walking down memory lane at a dinner party. You can talk about what eggs came from where. And we 
mix them with these really craggy old um, candlesticks that we got backpacking on our honeymoon in Belize. So this was how I made my own space work. It's definitely not finished. I ran out of money for the plantation shutters, so that will come down the road. But don't be afraid to just make the change. Don't always think you have to have the money right away. There are a lot of creative solutions to make your house amazing. So I hope you guys have fun doing this in your own dining room. And please don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Flawless Design for All. Vanity check. Deliciousness. Delicious. But, was that okay? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? You're sure. Are you sure? Can I watch it really fast? No. All right, can I watch them now? Yeah. Okay, can we delete this footage? I'm gonna start over one more time. Okay. Delicious.